Hello, my name is Hermann Berg. I'm head of industrial IoT yeah, at Moxa Europe. Please, maybe in 10 minutes. <laughs> I'm live uh, at SPS um, at the Microsoft booth, Hall 5, room, uh, booth 340. And uh, Microsoft invited a number of partners to showcase industrial use cases for IoT. And uh, let's walk over there and have a look at the, the use case that we prepared. So if you, if you see over here, we have um, prepared uh, an industrial use case and Steffi helped with that. Steffi, maybe Hi, you can Herman. say, who are you? What do you do at Microsoft? Nice to have you here, Hermann. So I'm a <laughs> solution you. architect for industrial IoT and IoT at Microsoft. Thank you. And what Tell I, us a bit more yes. about... So what I do on a daily basis is I talk to customers about OT and industrial IoT projects. And one of those pro projects that is actually very successful is also here on the booth. It's called, uh, it's a ZF Agile Factory project or Smart Factory, however you want to call it, uh, together with our partner PwC. And the goal of the project is to basically digitalize the, the factories and uh, make, it, make them smart using gateways and using the clouds to, to give insights. And is that more than a PLC? Yes, that is actually rolled out in production. But I must say, you are right, Hermann. So in my daily, daily uh, work, and I talk a lot with different customers, it's, it's a challenge to actually make it to production because of the complexity of IoT itself. But what we see quite often is that uh, customers get stuck after a PLC phase, more or less. So basically, when they need to scale, or when they need to roll out something, they're getting stuck for multiple reasons. One okay. is complexity, uh, among others. So um, yeah, this is a challenge that we encounter uh, most of the time, because the nature of a PLC is that you start with an ideal environment, and as soon as you have to integrate into something that is existing, or you have to do a retrofit into the OT, environment, then it gets really challenging. Yeah. And this is what I see. But it's also something that we discussed, right, Hermann? Exactly. So uh, we work together on these issues and try to uh, find solutions for the different um, issues that you, for instance, and our, and our joint customers for yeah. instance, uh, uh, face. And um, uh, so we wrote a white paper together. Uh, some months ago, which is really cool. And we try really to give practical advice how to overcome these challenges. Exactly. So and, and you as Moxer as experts, so if you encounter a customer, what do you see from the networking side? What would you say? What's the usual setup? Yeah, that actually the answer is this demo. So uh, let's have a look at the demo uh, together. So what we prepared first is an industrial landscape that you would find in a modern company. Um, many people use the ISA 95 and Pera functional model uh, to build these factories, let's say, um, and they come with different levels. So you can see here at the very bottom, the process level where the actual production machines are located. Then you see the control level, supervisory level and site level uh, covering things like SCADA system, MES systems, and then the rest of the uh, company's IT infrastructure, including the cloud. And um, that's what we try to show here. And a security concept that many companies use uh, in this area is called IEC 62443. So here, 62443. And the key concept there is network segmentation. You, so you build zones uh, that are kind of encapsulated so nobody can hack into them easily. And only uh, very specific data can leave uh, the different zones or travel from zone to zone up into the cloud, if you like. But it's, uh, it's really those la layers and zones uh, that should, should be fairly um, yeah, protected from the rest of the environment. And uh, here you can see all the, the green bars here are the, the boundaries of those zones. And then you have conduits, you see them here, P1, P4 and so on. They, are, they kind of translate to firewall policies, and that's how the data is, uh, is limited between these different zones. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the consequences is that if you're down here at process or control level, typically you're not allowed to connect directly to the cloud. So if you want to put a gateway at this control level, for instance, yeah. you're not allowed uh, to connect it to the cloud, but Microsoft uh, developed Nested Edge. That's yeah. a function that's part of the IoT edge uh, um, yeah, portfolio, exactly. so th please explain uh, yeah, so how that works. Basically, we have nested edge, as you already said. And nested edge means that you have a hierarchy of devices, and those hierarchies, the, the lower you get, they do not need to be online. 
So as you can see here, you have different layers. You already explained it right, Hermann. At the top, you have a gateway, which is usually on level four, level five, and this gateway connects to the cloud. But below, with the setup in Nested Edge, so you basically run a container environment, which is called IoT Edge, and those different layers connect via proxies down. And one layer can only communicate with the next layer. But for example, this device here on layer two, it, cannot, it will never and cannot connect to the cloud at all. It's completely offline forever, and it gets deployed via the, the upper level and communicates also um, via the upper level. The cool thing is that you can manage the stuff via the cloud. Basically what happens is in the cloud, you say, okay, I want to deploy a new container or I want to manage or configure something. Then the message is being received by this device and gets routed down so that the, the lower edge devices never have to talk to the cloud directly. So no network traffic between these devices, only data exchange from here to, yes, here, to here, up to the, down to the lowest level. Yeah, Great. correct. That's the and setup. The, how do you implement that? How do you bring those two worlds together? That's the uh, kind of the meat of the white paper. And yes. uh, the key concept here is the what we call IoT zone. So the IoT zone encapsulates the IoT gateway. So the gateway is not placed into any of the existing yeah. zones where they could cause many security yeah. uh, breaches. Uh, so now we put the gateway into the, a separate IoT zone and then very carefully define the conduits and controls that IC62443 uh, mandates, and then we can co connect securely uh, to both the devices in the field as well as indirectly to the cloud. And one of the assets that we can connect and did yes. connect is it's a 3D, 3D printer. printer. <laughs> <laughs> Which is Tell actually really cool. So we have two 3D printers here that uh, act as industrial assets. So those are usually on level two. They are not connected to the cloud at all. They are only talking to the Moxa setup behind the wall, basically. And what we are printing here, which is also cool, is like spare parts for a drone. The drone you can find here. And this is what we are printing. Uh, but on top of that, that we connect the stuff securely uh, to the to the shop floor is that we are using a HoloLens to, to do some other use case, right, Gerhard? Do you want to show us this, what you're doing? <laughs> yes, hello, my name is Gerhard. Uh, I show you now the, our use case with Dynamics, with Dynamics 365. We have to implement two use cases. The one is Remote Assist, and one is the Dynamics Guide, where you can go step by step to uh, documentation with the HoloLens. So when I now need some support, I put up my HoloLens and then I call Steffi. So I'm and, your support now. And Steffi is my support guy. She she will ha ho hopefully helps me. I call her right now. Ah, I see. And now yeah. you can see here on the on the on the desktop, she can follow me whatever I'm doing. And now I can say, Hey Steffi, what is happening with my printers? And then she can let me to fix something or or check something. But what we have also on the HoloLens, we have on the HoloLens our guide, and they can call this guide. You see this now also in the in the diagram. And then, for example, I'm doing an ex inspection of that, and he 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 let me now let me now start it. So now, and I can only with my eyes, I can move to this guide. This guide exactly describes me what I have to do, what I have to check. And, and when I look into the eyes to the next level, I can check each of the printer material of the color. When I go into the, looking to the printer, I see this, that you see the errors appears and then he lets me immediately where I have to do the checks and where I have to uh, uh, see the printer material. Then I do the next step and then he asked me, is the printer material okay? And then I say, yes, this is okay. And not need for this my fingers, I only need this for this eyes tracking. And now I say, okay, check each printer for the conditions. And then on the end, uh, uh, I, I, I have to check the conditions. And then he asked me checking the pads. So I check also the pads. And when the pads are finished, I gave a check mark on the printer that the check is done. So on the end, this is a six, six, step, uh, 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 six step, step implementation. But then the end, customers can very easily develop by their own visited elements. 
that's from my side. <laughs> Thank you, Gerhard. Do you have Thank any last words, Hermann? Absolutely. Uh, one of the ways or the way that we connected this printer and we could connect other uh, industrial assets um, is the EDS G4000. So uh, that's a Moxa uh, uh, switch. And if you would like to try a similar setup, uh, um, we have reserved a couple of units for you to try. So if you would like to receive a loan device uh, for a certain period of time, get in touch with us. We put it in the in the show notes uh, in, the, in LinkedIn uh, how how to apply. So with that, thank you very much, Gerhard. Thank you very much, Steffi. Thank you, Hermann. And, um, uh, you'll find the contacts, the LinkedIn uh, contacts of all three of us. If you have further questions, please get in touch and we'll be happy to talk to you. Yep. Thanks a lot. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.